Okay, hello, Tyler Brown here. Returning from a bit of a hiatus, uh, coming back from a cottage weekend, lots of fun, I'm fat, uh, I'm tan, I'm burnt, all the good things that come with it, but glad to be back, I miss making videos, uh, but I'm not done. If any of you thought I quit, I was not done. I am still here, and today I got something really interesting, exciting to talk about, which was getting access to Dali. Dali, Dali, uh, I should know this, uh, but Dali 2, which is an image, genera image generation system that allows you to create, as they say, realistic images and art from a description in natural language. And this is from OpenAI using massive large language models that they've trained on all the data across the internet, and then using that to allow you to do a simple text entry and then create that uh, very quickly, to be honest, and uh, in many, many different styles. So you can see they've got uh, an image here, but now I can say, uh, you know, click on a couple of different options of this and generate different images. And you can even say different styles, pencil drawing, Andy Warhol, we haven't done that one yet. All very fascinating, just the, the language comprehension, the culture comprehension, the, the digital art comprehension that this system has. And overall has been a huge driver of interest. Um, questions uh, as they even talk about, uh, I think down here, you know, questions of ethics and challenges uh, that could be coming from it, that it could be har harmful, that it could be misused, that it could be used on uh, to do deep fakes or uh, misrepresentation. All these incredible advancements in technology and this image generation also creates opportunities for uh, abuse. And so there's what they've done is set up basically a wait list and almost like a sort of a beta version uh, of access to, to Dali. Dali, I'm just going to say Dali. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to be in part uh, of that. So I got in, I, I put in um, an application just for this wait list, uh, which I think was literally maybe last week. And so I was really surprised at how quick the turnaround time was. I know for OpenAI and GPT-3, which also have access to that, um, it took a lot longer. So quickly, how to get access to Dali. Uh, to image generation, which is the title of this video. Um, go here, I'm gonna drop this link uh, in as a resource, the wait list, and then you can see first name, last name, email, Twitter profile, Instagram profile, LinkedIn profile, and then what describes you. For this, I took a risk, I said I believe other, uh, and what I would definitely recommend is um, adding that uh, profile information from the social media. Now, I don't know why I, I got approved so quickly, but I'm wondering if even some of the content that I create around language data and language analysis and large language models maybe got me bumped up uh, a little bit ahead of the line, or maybe this is just the turnaround time and it's not as exclusive or hard to get in uh, as I thought in the one week is actually pretty standard. You could put in an application and then within a week uh, you have uh, your access to Dali. So I'm in the system here. Uh, this is actually the um, uh, the actual OpenAI one and it's a whole different subdomain and way that they're hosting it. You can see uh, beta versus labs.openai. Um, and then you can start to see some of the results uh, that are coming. So these are the images that they've sort of curated uh, as images uh, that people are um, uh, have created and are now in sort of this gallery because they've really they're really happy with the outcome. Uh, a lot of these were used in sort of the initial sort of case study or press release uh, around this. Now, you are able to. I can go here. I, I don't know the exact limits. I believe it's something like fifty a day. I've just heard that. I don't know if that's true. I have not hit the limit in a day. And I can go and type in uh, something like this right now. Uh, I might type in uh, something. I'm just trying to think. Uh, it's been hard. What I'll do before I do that, just is to show you where my head has been at. A couple of the ones that I've uh, done <laughs> in the past. So um, one of the things that was really interesting was sort of this idea of 3D models. Um, and so. Just wanted to take a crack at that. So if you stack 3D model with photorealistic, there is um, a version that gets there and I think creates something successful. This was generally pretty good. I was pretty happy with that one. You can see, because I was at the cottage, uh, I basically abandoned my family and was like, all right, I gotta do some uh, some, some prompts here. Um, but, uh, so that's why they're all on mobile and I took screenshots of mobile instead of saving them like an idiot. Uh, but uh, this was, this one that I found was really interesting was basically Pokemon cards. And then it builds them into the framework of that card. And I thought the results on this one were then really interesting. So Pokemon card, I said Pikachu, still wondering about how it works with characters who are again copyrighted or known. But then I said made out of a tomato. And I was really impressed by the result uh, of this one. I thought this one was fantastic. And I think I did some more, maybe those would pop up. One of the fascinating things was, Again, sort of giving this sort of framework or template. So the movie cover was another one 
um, I, I try to do with Pretty Woman and then Julia Roberts and then in the style of Van Gogh. Love Van Gogh. Uh, the thing that I found, I found interesting is when you put in celebrities that are widely known, like someone like Julia Roberts, this one it's a little harder to tell, but generally it seems like they're not, I don't know if they're able to put real like just their normal image in kind of thing it seems to be a bit distorted and i saw that with um, a version i just did a, f a photo of kendrick lamar it was not kendrick lamar it was like this weird mishmash of people and um i don't know if there'll be other images that are representative of that but the actual generation of accurate depictions of people is really fascinating and you can see here that julia roberts this almost looks like her but still doesn't quite uh, digital art of Darth Vader fighting Neo. Sometimes it doesn't seem to quite get it. I don't see Neo. I basically see Darth Vader fighting Darth Vader in this one. Um, a scary centipede made out of Lego blocks. Interesting, uh, pretty accurate. The one thing that didn't really reflect in this one was the word scary, whereas in other images, the, the word scary had actually been able to make a pretty stark contrast on the image from being you know, not scary to sort of terrifying. And this one, it didn't have that same, but the overall um, rendering was pretty beautiful, uh, I thought, and accurate of this one. You can start to see uh, my thought process as I go through these. A river of maple syrup with pancakes and French toast. Um, another challenge I've seen, and I think this is actually a limitation of the way that I've described it, is it doesn't necessarily know where to place things. Uh, and uh, I think there may be a couple other examples of this, but, you know, um, I, I wanted the sort of river to be the maple syrup. In this case, it was like water uh, was still there. It was still a river. And then maple syrup was being poured into it. So a little lack of comprehension there, but still the, the main concepts and overall grasp is very, very impressive and, and interesting. Another one, vinyl album cart, uh, album art cover. Uh, like this was just actually beautiful. Um, still a little bit, you know, the half body thing didn't necessarily translate to all of them. But in the end, I, I thought this was really cool. The other part that you will see here is this idea of um, words not being generated properly. So I don't know why it generated these words. I don't know what Surrey, Blosil, what is, whatever that is. It doesn't seem to be able to spell things properly. It doesn't need necessarily understand that. It starts to render text for no reason whatsoever. I'm not ex exactly sure why it's doing that, but um, one thing that I noticed pretty consistently across some of the um, pieces here, this was another one I sort of um, uh, uh, adjusted it a bit and then made sure that I put the word beautiful uh, and then the multi coat, like not exactly all fully accurate, but it seems that even Dali wants to generate beautiful images. And so when you support that, couple other ones are in the style of or the um, you know digital art etc etc there are a couple ways to modify the, the, the text prompt that you put in to then um, create a more striking result Beatles <laughs> you know fascinating here in the style of Blade Runner I didn't quite grasp this but really overall uh, fascinating I find that the, the but as isn't a very good um, prompt it doesn't seem to get it uh, fully dinosaurs made of metal and transformers um, this one was which was one of the more uh, interesting ones that I, I really liked um, it was a couple of versions that we that my partner and I we tested and played around with uh, with this um, but uh, some limitations, some good things, and just overall some, some fascinating insights that are coming uh, out of this and just playing around. I'm gonna continue this. I, I, I'm pretending that this is like my only video on this, but there will be more. I'll continue to experiment. There are also already some forums and threads. There are people discussing how to get the best results from uh, from Dolly and the um, you know the, the, the outcomes that, that, that they're hoping. So the digital art, the photorealism. As you're going through, it's really nice. It starts to give you some tips, and I thought that was really fascinating sort of just helps you under un, understand but i'm gonna do you know uh, a rainy day in toronto as uh dogs fall from the sky no you can't see this uh from the sky um in the style of who is the, the style of uh uh andy i hope i got this right andy warhol uh, let's see what comes out of this just so you can see sort of the loading and how this actually goes through you can see the tip um, that is coming in. oh there you go you can see some of my past ones this one here on the right corner was really fascinating so basically what I typed was Vatsal my business partner there uh, okay, so this is already coming back so I'll, I'll finish this thread uh, was Vatsal Shaw's future wife and what was fascinating about this was 
that Vatsal Shah was basically detected as Indian, and so when it picked future wives, it detected all of them as Indian as well too. And so I don't think in that regards I'm, I'm claiming any sort of racism or bias. Uh, well, maybe the bias part, but that was really a very see Vassal Shah's future wife. You can actually see that, and then you can see the weird sort of rendering of images if you zoom in, sort of the eyes uh, kind of part, and that's pretty consistent across all the images and then the faces there as it tries to bring um, people together. And now, now I'm happy I can see all my past uh, ones. There were some really cool ones with pixel art uh, that you could do. Those were a couple more of my dinosaur uh, ones. You can see where my head's at. And then as I mentioned, sort of this Kendrick Lamar um, version, which almost looks like Kendrick Lamar, but is not Kendrick Lamar. Fascinating to see that, how it sort of struggles with that. And then I even put myself a photo. I wanted a photo specifically of Tyler Bryden. I don't know how it rendered this images, but you can see uh, that, you know, it's sort of struggling with the actual face to make it look realistic. This, I would say, was the most realistic, almost to me, a possible real person. So that was cool. And then lastly, I had sort of the rainy uh, day in Toronto in the st uh, style of Andy Warhol. Um, pretty cool. Makes sense. Uh, a rainy day in Toronto as dogs fall from the sky. And <laughs> so, you know, you can see that Toronto isn't necessarily represented. The, the placement of it is, is unique and they're testing dairy ones. And then you can go in and you can actually save, you can edit. The edit is really fascinating. You can sort of erase part of the image. I haven't done any of that. There's the variations that will drive deeper. You can save that and then you can share. And I, I'm actually really surprised once you get access, you can literally download this to a file as a computer. You can flag as something there and then you can see if you like a specific variation, um, how uh, you basically see more variations in that style that now that they know that you like that one. So overall, I mean, it's been uh, too much fun. Uh, I am uh, back to work here now. Uh, and there you go, see the original and you can see the variations. I am back to work um, the best I can be, but knowing that this endless pit of creativity uh, is sitting here is uh, a tough one for me, to be honest. So I will uh, continue to sort of um, play around with this. If you have any, first of all, I mean, go apply for yourself to get into the wait list and hopefully you get approved quickly. That was part of the vid video here. Um, and then uh, if you have any requests of things that you'd like to see, please shoot them. I'm, I'm running out of prompts. It's almost endless, the opportunity, and it almost breaks your brain sometimes to think you get tired just thinking of, wow, what, what do I really want to see here? I do think there are actual practical applications of this for mocking up ads uh, in marketing and branding and all this stuff. I do think there are, are, are some really fascinating things that I haven't necessarily explored that, that are worthwhile. And, um, you know, if you're interested in this stuff, follow along. I'm going to be keep uh, banging these out and hopefully have some uh, interesting uh, images here. I even thought of how could you use, I wonder if there's an option to do, uh, I'll just do this one last one, like basically like uh, uh, if I go back to the YouTube thumbnail for a video on uh, Open AI's Dally 2. Let's see if I can do a stylish just to do that. I'll share this just to see like, uh, you know, this might be completely horrible, uh, but where there is some poss possibility for sort of brainstorming or ideas or things to think of or just straight up again, creativity there. Uh, I am not sure. We'll wait for this to pop through and then I'll close out this video and you can see with the spelling piece there, but some sort of interesting things. It almost feels like it got it as a YouTube thumbnail um, with the face focus there and some pretty striking images. So uh, overall, uh, maybe doesn't get you exactly what you want, but I think this original piece and then the ability to edit is very, very incredible. And I'm just, uh, you know, I was trying to explain to my mom and her partner, like why this is so fascinating. It didn't quite get that across. Um, but I do think if you have this idea for something you want, you can see it created on the spot. It's a pretty beautiful moment. I'm experiencing that moment and it, it blows my mind, the trajectory of technology we're on if we're here already. So this has been Tyler Bryden. I hope you like this. If you like this kind of content, like, comment, send me a message. Do whatever you want, really. Uh, I'm here. I'm going to continue doing this. And thank you to, very much to everyone who, who tunes in. I appreciate it greatly. Bye-bye.